All right, everybody, so it's finally time to pull the trigger on this move. We're going to take these solar panels and the equipment that you see inside this little mobile solar trailer here, and we're going to make the move up to our shed up here. We're going to put the solar equipment inside the shed. We're going to put the panels and some additional panels on a ground mount behind the shed. Pay no attention, you're seeing a little preview of the trenching that's necessary to make this happen. So. We'll get into that in a later video, but let's see how we're going to make this happen. Hi, I'm Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, everybody, here we are at the drawing board again. Uh, you're looking at the free version of SketchUp online. Um, it is time to transition from our uh, temporary and mobile solar setup of six panels and the rest of the equipment to our final solution of 15 total panels. I'm actually going to use the same equipment, so we size the equipment to uh, anticipate the 15 panels total eventually. So. It's just time to step up like we had always planned. Um, we've gotten a great, great use out of this uh, temporary mobile setup. It's been fantastic. But it's time to jump it up to our 15 panels. So to do that, I'm gonna build a ground mount, which we're about to kind of design here. Um, we'll get into some of the nitty gritty details as we go through the build. This is highly conceptual at this point. Some of the stuff won't look exactly like it's gonna look, but this is all, I like to use SketchUp to visualize, you know, kind of, what the materials look like, how, how big things need to be, some, some measurements, uh, how much material. So this helps me go and kind of buy the material and hopefully not have to run back and forth to the store a bunch of times for things that I didn't think about. So I try and think about everything during this process as if I'm actually building it. So that's what I like to use SketchUp for. So for this, we're going to, so we're, we're doing 15 panels. We're going to do, um, we're kind of standing, if you want to think about on, on our land, I would be standing to the south of this square here. This square represents the ground um, underneath the, the mount. Um, so if I was standing on the south of it right now, looking to the north, it's going to slope kind of from the north to the south towards me. Imagine I'm the sun. And um, it'll face true south, uh, not magnetic south. That's a, There's a difference there. So you definitely want to face true south. Um, it's going to be three panels across from left to right and five panels tall. So that's our array of 15. They're gonna be kind of in that landscape orientation. So kind of uh, wider than they are tall. Um, that footprint, uh, just because of the size of my panels, um, when you lay those panels out in that orientation, it's actually almost a perfect square. But of course, then once you tilt it up, it, it shrinks a little bit in the one direction. So it's about, it's a little over 16 feet wide and it's gonna be about 14 and a half feet deep uh, as a projection onto the ground when you, once you tilt it up. So that's kind of what it's gonna, the ground space it's gonna take up. Uh, it's gonna be tilted at 27 degrees. That'll be the slope of it. Um, that's not exactly our latitude, but it is based on a formula, based on our latitude. So, so that's how we figure out. There's a formula to figure out um, that number, and mine is 27. So that's how it'll be sloped. So the first thing to do here is to place some posts. And as you can tell from the, the ground projection that we're looking at there, I've chosen to set those posts in a little bit. So the It'll essentially be cantilevered, kind of over. It'll hang over the ends on on all sides, which is it's fine. It allows that allows our posts to come a little closer together and be a little more stable, uh, and not as much of a gap to span with the things that we're going to put on here. So these are each uh, four by four treated posts. Uh, they'll all go two feet into the ground in concrete. Uh, the front ones will stick up two feet, and the back ones end up sticking up about seven and a half feet. And again, that. Those measurements are to give us our slope of 27 degrees that we're looking for. So, um, so after the posts are in, we will add a set of beams to the front and the back here. And those will be 16 foot long. Again, uh, the panels kind of across are gonna measure about 16 feet. And actually, from front to back, they measure a little over 16 feet as well. We're just happen to be tilting it, but... Um, so our beams are 16 feet to kind of accommodate the whole thing. There'll be a tiny bit of overhang of the panel. I mean, literally an inch, inch and a half or so um, on the sides. Those beams will be attached 
to the posts with engineered screws. Um, I recently got some advice from a, from a commenter on another video that to look into these engineered screws and they essentially replace uh, lag screws that, that people used for a long, long time and, and still do. But these engineered screws are, they're a little smaller, they're a little easier to work with. You're not supposed to have to pre-drill. My experience is that I kind of pre-drill everything just because I prefer to, uh, because I've seen too many things split, but you're not supposed to have to pre-drill. They are smaller, um, they go in a little easier, and uh, they really, uh, even though the one drawback of them is supposed to be cost, uh, after pricing them out, they really, uh, the cost is about a wash as far as I can tell. So, so I'm gonna use engineered wood screws for that, they'll be four inches long. Um, so once we have these beams in place, I'm essentially gonna build a roof uh, structure on top of this. So we're gonna go with, the, uh, rafters. And those again, those are at my 27 degree angle. Um, they are notched with a, what's called a bird's mouth cut, right? So they'll, they'll kind of sit nicely on those, those beams at the front and the back. That notch is about two feet in from either end. So these, all, these also are 16 foot. Uh, these are two by sixes. I should have said the, the, the beams are two by sixes. The front and back beams are two by sixes treated. And these rafters are also two by sixes treated 16 footers so each of these beams each of these sets each of these sets of rafters each two of these rafters are made to accommodate one column of the panels of five panels so we'll have three columns of five here so we've got three sets of two rafters uh, those will be attached to the beams with um, rafter ties just kind of standard roofing material uh, again, just like we're building a sloped roof here. So that, I think, takes care of that step. After that, we are going to add on top of that what's called super strut. Now, this is where it gets a little conceptual because if you know anything about super strut, it doesn't really look like this, but this is about the size of it. Um, it's actually kind of a U. Picture it as a U channel facing upward. So the idea is that you put mounting hardware onto the backs, the... Uh, the uh, frames of the panels, the solar panels, and you mount that to hardware that slides in these in these channels on this on this super strut. So they come in ten foot length. So I'm going to attach the super strut to the rafters. Uh, at first, it'll be kind of just the bottom portion of it, and then I'll I'll use some extra for the top portion as well. Uh, it just so happens again with the size of my panels, this first ten foot length of super strut will accommodate the first three uh, row, the first three panels in a column of five. So, so the, the bottom 10 foot piece of Unistrut will hold the first three panels and then the last two will go on the top part. That works out well for me because at the start here, I'm only actually gonna put nine panels on. I'm gonna put three columns of three because that's what I happen to have uh, available and not being used at the moment. The, the last six that'll go onto the top, two more on each of these columns, um, are currently in use and feeding our trailer. So I'll have to, after I get these first nine mounted and some other setup, then I've got to um, basically disassemble my existing system and move the last six panels over and move the equipment as well and rewire everything. So uh, the super strut will be attached to the rafters with just uh, exterior wood screws and some washers. The washers are necessary because there's some large holes in the, in the super strut that uh, a screw head wouldn't really grab onto. So we'll need some washers to help that grab onto the super strut and hold it to the rafter. Uh, so let's see, that covers everything up to this point. So, so we're building basically a roof to hold each of these columns of panels. And I've got everything kind of spaced out and measured here so that everything fits up pretty closely. I will put a little gap between each of the panels, but uh, they'll, be, they'll be pretty close together. So all these measurements accommodate all of that. Um, and the last thing I'll do, because this is a, let's see, a 12 foot span between these rafters, there can be a little movement, uh, a little instability on these rafters. So I'm gonna add some blocking. Right here I'm just showing, um, for now I'm just showing blocking between the rafters that hold the panels. Um, but I think I'll actually go probably with blocking in between uh, in between the panel 
columns as well. So there'll probably be small pieces of blocking in here as well. Um, essentially, if I just buy another for each of these uh, rows of, of blocking, if I just buy another 16 foot piece of lumber, just like the beams for the front and the back, I can chop it up and it'll be enough to, to put the blocking across that whole, that whole section. So that's to stabilize things there. And one more uh, stabilization technique um, that I think I'll need to use for the back, I haven't drawn it yet, but I think I'll need to use is if you come around the back here, of course, because the back uh, posts are taller, you know, those front posts only stick two feet out of the ground and they go two feet in the ground. So if you were to walk over to them and push on them, they wouldn't really move at all. But these back ones being seven and a half feet out of the ground and once things are kind of attached to them and the wind starts to blow and things start to move, these back posts, if you pushed on them, they would give at least a little bit, if not a good bit. So, so the last thing I'm going to do that I haven't drawn yet is with another two by six, um, I will make a brace or a set of braces, actually diagonal braces from, from each of the back posts to that back beam. So there'll be a brace running this way and a brace running this way, like this. So I haven't drawn those, but I have accommodated that in my materials list. I get another two pieces of, of wood to be those braces. Um, that, I think, covers everything. Um, as far as you know, how this all goes together, again, you'll see some of those details when we pull out the actual material and start putting it together. But this is the concept at the moment. Um, and that should cover it. So let's get out there and start building this thing. And of course, after I close that down, I just realized that I didn't show maybe the most important part of the whole thing. I didn't even show you the panels on here. So um, just to give you the visual. Um, so there are the panels sitting on there. So I've got them kind of colored so they're a little hard to make out the lines, but there's one, two, three, four, five, right? A column of five, three columns. They're all butted up pretty close, but again, I'll leave, I'll leave a little bit of a gap between them. I'll put a little spacer between them. But there it is from the back side. Um, shows how things go underground. So uh, again, a little more blocking that I'll add. Uh, and two braces in the back. But this should be enough to give me my materials list to run off to the store and get everything I need and hopefully get it all in one shot. So let's give it a try.